Hi, this is this is Stephen Root, and I'm on uh, Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. I don't understand the title because a small kiss at the end of a session is not such a bad thing. Hi there. Welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. I am Jake Hogan and you are alone with me and that is a terrible mistake on your part. This is the show where I talk to interesting, famous, funny people about my problems and today is no exception. We have the marvelous Stephen Root, the great actor who has been graced your TV and uh, big screen hundreds and hundreds of times. Most notably to me as uh, Jimmy James and News Radio, and also in Office Space and Barry and Dodgeball. I watch Dodgeball all the time, and, and his character in Dodgeball is the one I relate to. Does that say uh, something bad about me? Maybe, but I can't hear you because this is one sided conversation. So there. Uh, if you have something to say to me, you can reach me at dbawjk at gmail.com. That's don't be alone with Jake Hogan at gmail.com. D-B-A-W-J-K at gmail.com. What I really, really need from you is your comments, your hellos, your suggestions, and please give me questions that I can ask my guests. We have a whole segment based on this. I'm dependent on you, and I'm going to start giving out prizes for the best question. So if you have a really good question, I'm going to give you a prize. I don't know what it is, but it, it, uh, it, won't, be, it won't be something genetic. Let's put it that way. It won't be part of my genes. But it will be something we can, I can share. I can legally share with you guys. So that's going to be interesting to find out what that is. Tonight's topic. Uh, tonight, I'm assuming, you're, <laughs> I'm assuming you're listening to this in the evening. That you're curled up with a drink, a martini, and you've turned on your podcast, which looks like an old-time radio, and you're just by the fire listening to this. Am I wrong? Are you on an extra cycle? If so, get off your extra cycle and get onto a couch and get a martini. Anyway, today's topic is this. Outsider. Mr. Root plays a lot of outsiders in his career. That's actually what he he does so well. He brings humanity to those roles. I have spent my life feeling like an outsider. I know that's not unique. We all sort of feel outsider-ish, uh, but most of us have a group of people that we feel like, ah, this is these are my people. I kind of have that, but mostly I feel still on the outside. I watch, I observe life more than I participate in life, and that's problematic to me. It's good for a writer or good for an actor, but it's not good for life. You wanna be somebody who's participating, who's in the arena, and uh, I'm not there yet, and maybe, maybe we can figure out why, and maybe we can figure out how to change that, and if not how to change that, how to accept that. So that's what we're gonna be talking about with the great Steven Root, right after this. Don't be alone with Jake Hogan. I want to thank you, first of all, for mm. being here. That, oh, of course. Thank Your you. Your kindness. <laughs> uh, two things I asked you. One was this that thing where, where we were doing a democratic, uh, we we're trying to sort of all right. do a commercial to not get the country uh, yes, ruined. Exactly. Uh, you, you stepped it, it, up for it that. It tried to help, but it's, it it's, didn't help. It didn't really help. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and this, I mean, you know, we don't know each other that well, and you're so kind to do this. No, but you're uh, you're within the realm scope of actually talented people that I know. So I figure <laughs> you can't be too bad. Now that's not. I mean, thank you, but you know a lot of very talented people. We know I, Dave Foley. We know Dave Foley, so, but I mean, I went through the IMDb a little bit, uh, and uh, you've got a few credits, couple, and some of them are with excellent, excellent people. Some of them are. Uh, you got your Cohen brothers. Got uh, those are good boys. Yeah, holy shit! Mm. I mean, so heroes, obviously. Hey, well, um, they're, yeah, they're my heroes. And and sure. uh, but also just like every movie and TV show you ever thought <laughs> of, you've been on in some way, no, shape, or form. No, but I've been I've been lucky to work a lot. I didn't. The funny part about it is, um, I didn't even do. Uh, I never got on to the TV screen until I was 35. Yeah. And that, that's, <laughs> you know, that and, may be a, and good a lot thing. of people started a lot earlier than that. But maybe that's great. Yeah, maybe. Because like, like you have, people like to be pegged in a, in a category. So mm -hmm. 35 to now is not that different. <laughs> <laughs> we show up at 18. It is in your body. 18 to 35, yeah, yeah. there's a big difference. Like if you're a wonderkind, yeah. then you're 35, you're done. <laughs> but 35 to whenever. It's probably, yeah, it's it was probably better. Yeah. It was all theater all the time. Yeah, that. no, I, yeah, you had your, uh, your, your, 
Shakespearean theater? Shakespeare, yes. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, that's I, I saw you in Macbeth and I thought, wow, <laughs> it, it must be a great experience for Root to finally do uh, a great Shakespearean thing, but apparently you've done a shit ton of it. Yeah, I did a shit ton of it in my mid-20s, so it was really cool to be able to do it on film, especially yeah. with the boy, uh, well, one of the boys. Yeah. With Joel, yeah. That's fantastic. It was so fun. Uh, it's great. It was a great movie, too. It was a great movie. It was shot like a, a 40s noir movie. Yes. All on Paramount. It looked that way. And sets, no no outdoor sets. Fantastic yeah, it, it fun. It looked gorgeous. That's fantastic. I, and it was it was actually uh, very good. I just wasn't allowed to say the name of the movie to most actors because they get freaked right. out about it. I, I go back and forth because I think the reason Joel entitled it The Tragedy of Macbeth, mm -hmm. then you could say Macbeth. Right. If you, it was just the M word, then <laughs> no. <laughs> you know why that's a forbidden word, do you? I, uh, at least I, I, heard I remember the original story, but I don't remember this, the this, original story. This is the story I heard. Okay. It's because when traveling companies of actors were in trouble and the, it was just about to go out of business, they right. put on Macbeth. Ah, huh. well, okay. <laughs> and yeah, then, that makes sense. And then they would go out of business. So it was like, <laughs> it was a bad, it was like the last ditch effort to try and get something going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nah, uh, nah, it was it was fun to do because I'd never, of all the ones that I did before that, I'd never done Macbeth. Although yeah. the company that I was in uh, had done it the year before I got there as a kabuki. And okay. I thought that was a great idea. Yeah. Well, every, every time you sort of add a pastiche onto a Shakespeare thing, yeah. it brightens it, makes it a little mostly newer. Mostly it works. You know, it sure. mostly works, yeah. which is amazing. I'm doing an all fat Jewish version of uh, <laughs> Titus Andromachus. So, uh, Love it. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Easily costumed. <laughs> <laughs> I first met you many years ago when you were doing a show called News Radio. I remember that show. And one of my very best friends, Dave Foley, was on that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not shy about saying that people are jerks. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, this guy's not a jerk. Not a jerk. And so, so you came highly recommended from Dave <laughs> as not a jerk. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the kid, I hadn't even been that familiar with kids in the hall before before news radio because I was still old at that Shame point. on you. Yeah, I know. I was old. Yeah. I was uh, like, that was young people comedy. Yeah. And I was 40, you know. So I was like, oh. And then I, it was like a revelation to me to see that stuff. So this show, Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan, yeah. uh, is a... Uh, First of all, we're all wondering. We're all wondering why I have a show. I'm wondering too, and so I'm not sure why I have a show. But it, you know, had to do something over pandemic and a strike and other kind of stuff. So I sort of fell into this. Yeah, I it's think this, a lot of people did. Yeah. Do you, wait a second. You're saying other people have podcasts? Yes. What? So many. Ryan. You so did not many. tell me that other people have podcasts. <laughs> Producer Ryan's just looking, oh, I don't know. Like, oh, it's just it's crazy. Who are, are much more famous than All you. All right, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> My chances just got much, much slimmer of success here. Fuck. No, no. God no. damn it. All good. All right, well. Uh, All the writers are listening to you. Yeah, that's fine. So the that's good. Five of those people. Yeah, that'll give them, exactly. We'll have a sponsor for people who wear like baseball caps and shorts. That That's all you do, that, isn't, that's though, true. isn't it? Yeah, true. Uh, but I, what I was going to say is... Is yes. Jimmy Jameson, Jimmy, Jimmy James, G Jimmy James, Jimmy James, was a rich. The man so nice, he named him twice. Was rich, yes, and fabulous. But even on that show, he was kind of an outsider. And this show is about me working out my problems. And one of the problems mm. I have, or just issues in my life, is I feel like an outsider. I always have, always my whole life. Yeah, okay, my, mine too. So like you I know, feel like you're being looked at every moment of the day. And right. We are looking, we we're because we're not on the inside, we're observing this life on the other side of the fence right. in a whole other way too. Yeah, a, a step removed. I, I've always felt that way yeah. as well. So, but then I, I moved as a kid every year and a yeah. half, you know, construction brat. Right. So that was what was happening. But you landed, I thought you landed <laughs> in Florida. I landed in Florida not till high school. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. I mean, we, we did a, a side trip to... Fort Lauderdale for a year and a half when I was in seventh grade, maybe. Right, yeah. so permanent, permanent outsider. Permanent outsider, because you're always, you never have um, close friends. Right. Because they're gone in a year. Right. I mean, uh, so the I think the oldest friend that I have is from, from high school. So I'm going to make this assumption, mm -hmm. because I've watched your stuff, that you, that you as an actor all the roles that I've seen you that I love you in have mostly been playing people a little bit 
outside of the mainstream. If if Jimmy James is a rich, you know, Ted Turner style uh -huh. guy, there's not many of those guys. Right. And they you know, they and he he was a guy who sort of walked in and sort of was a voice of calm a lot of the times, a little bit voice of crazy. But um Yeah, but, but also Bent is, is yeah, how I describe Bent it. Bent is right. I, I played a lot of Bent characters. And in Barry is your character's Barry, Bent. Yeah, I mean yeah. uh, in Dodgeball, mm -hmm. your character's very much on the outside in in uh, an office space, literally Even more so. sent to the basement <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> Through all that, you have brought a humanity to every mm. single one of your characters you've ever played. I appreciate played. that. I hope it's, so. It's a hundred percent true, and it's it's kind of why you're so great. Which is, I don't feel you're making fun of any of these people. You are just finding a reality to those people, and you're bringing it forth. And I think, I think you have an insight into what it is to be an outsider because you you make those people there aren't jokes to you no they're not they have to have they have to have some grounded reality in them and that grounded reality is their humanity i think you know yeah and and even if it's deep 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 within them you've got to uh, I mean, at least i do when i when i'm doing these guys I feel i've got to bring out a real humanity in them or else they're just caricatures have you ever played a character without any pathos at all really um no i got close with barry but, yeah but he has a lot of humanity in him um that that guy um complete evil i don't think i've played because uh, i don't know if i'd feel comfortable you said that for real it. life okay okay yeah all right sure so that's that's your job. This is your life. Right. No, uh, no, I know, but that's exactly right. There, there's not a straight up, you know, one sided caricature right. thing. I mean, and it might be a good thing to do as an actor. Yeah, uh, because I'm a character actor, and that's what I do. Is I do different stuff, and I've consciously tried to do different stuff. But I have have I played right. somebody completely? No. Not really. Or or completely on the other side. A perfectly good person, like, you know, magically perfect person. Right. You know, no, because there's a humanity to what you're doing. So my question to you as mm. somebody who is, you know, friend or friend adjacent mm -hmm. uh, is when do we get to feel like normalized? When do we get to feel like we're on the inside as a, ourselves yeah, or yeah. as the actor as ourselves. You're a very successful person. You do. Well, you have. You just flew in from New York. You have things going on and mm -hmm. other things. Do you feel completely comfortable in yourself? Is that little boy who was never okay? All right. <laughs> right. Do you? No. 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 I and and I I think as as you wrote in your little letter to me, it's like I don't think there's anyone uh, who feels completely normal. I don't I don't think so unless 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 the intellectual level is maybe a little lower <laughs> because then you're not worrying about anything I but so i just i was recently not to name drop mm. but i was at a party with adam sandler yeah adam walks into a room uh -huh. and he looks doesn't worry about anything he seems really comfortable with right. himself i i think that's that's i i would love to be able to do that me too but that i mean why him and not us? Mm. You know, like why, why can't we just stroll into a place and just go like we were in the art gallery not long ago watching mm -hmm. our friend Toby at a, a painting exhibit. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we we saw beautiful stuff. But he's yeah. great. All right, and, and he is pretty comfortable with he's, himself. He's pretty, but he has worked hard on right. himself as we yeah. do. Right, but as but, we grow, older. but even in that environment where I'm with friends or anything, I was like. I'm not that much of an art guy. Like I, the, like yeah. part of me is feeling uncomfortable. Like your I'm, deficiencies come up immediately. Yeah, I mean in in myself yeah. as well. So when I saw you and Romy, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, the friend, friendly face, fantastic. <laughs> They're okay. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's good. So yeah. I'm, and, and no, I feel the same way. And, so, and I think a lot of people do. I don't. Besides Adam Sandler and maybe you know some Saturday Night Live people. Yeah. Who are very comfortable in their their skin. I don't. I can't think of it. Anybody so. who's completely comfortable. All right. So if we'll never be comfortable in our, skin, yeah. in our skin, let's discuss the advantages then of not being comfortable. Okay. Is the advantage of not being comfortable, I mean, aside from our, our, mm -hmm. our work, which- Well, it's very adv advantageous to uh, my work right. because I'm I'm an observer. Right. And it's like, see that, oh, I'm going to use this little part of that guy who's walking over there because that's weird. Right. But you can yeah. also do that not from a distance, but at a 
in in close sure, up. Sure. People that's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm having a conversation, but there's part of me that's observing that person. Absolutely. And true. just really taking yeah. that person in for later use or <laughs> yes. or, or yes. just survival. Maybe that makes us horrible. People. Maybe. <laughs> I'm using you for yeah. later use, and but that's I, it. Is it not yeah. true though? And it's also is it not a survival skill? Sure. It has so, yeah, it has to be. Because when you were a kid and you were new in a in a school, yeah. you have to sort of assess the dangers and you and had the, to go up to the board and, yeah. and you're by yourself yeah. with an audience for the first time right. of kids who want to hate you. And I think I, I still have my, my worst memory as I think is going up to a board, writing something on the board and have the whole class laugh. And I and I found out later it was because my ass was wiggling while I was writing with chalk. And it was yeah. like, it's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened. <laughs> and still is. Really? Yeah. That moment, the wiggling that ass moment. moment. I can oh still God. remember it. Yeah. I, I remember a lot of teachers <laughs> having wiggly asses as they wrote on the chalkboard. Yeah. yeah. They didn't seem to care so much. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I get I did. it. I get it. Because I was it? new kid, always. Because I was always new kid. And from that point on, we called you Ass Wiggler, which is still, <laughs> I don't know why that's your license plate or on your car. Boy. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you, like, it's one. strange of you to get that license plate <laughs> if it really was that traumatic. <laughs> but okay. I guess that's how you deal with it. Um, today, if you were writing on a chalkboard and your ass was wiggling and people were mm -hmm. laughing. Today, I would not wiggle my ass because I'm so sensitive <laughs> okay. about it. But couldn't you handle it better? <laughs> sure. If people were laughing. Yeah. Okay, me That too. would be okay. Because, you know, you, you grow up and you go like, you know, most people are, are idiots. So, you know, you right. can be an idiot in front of people. It's okay. So why are we still uncomfortable? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I always will be. Yeah, to a much lesser degree, certainly. Right. But uh, yeah, I think so. It's a, it's it's fascinating yeah, to it's me. People, sir, there are people who are shy, and there are people who are not. Yeah, I've always been shy. I've always been a reader. Uh -huh. Always been stand in the corner and watch right. people at a party. Yeah, I'm not that shy. Uh huh. I'm more. I'm loud. I th I think I cover my discomfort with the loud, uh -huh. with the loud part mm -hmm. or the jumping. I'm gonna be. I'm going to be ridiculous before you make me ridiculous or some other version yeah. of that, you know? Yeah. I think I, I do that in my profession as well. Don't mind. Don't mind looking like an idiot. Right. Yeah. And I think and it's part of, for me, it's part of my weight issue is I hide a lot of who I am under you know, nerves and food and mm -hmm. other and physically separate myself out because I'm heavier than most people. So I'm... Although I'm thinking of this, although I, I'm happy to make a you know physical fool of myself in my business it's in my personal life it's really hard i, I don't love fast you know uh games uh, where you you have to think fast and you have to react fast so you're not coming not to me. charade night i'm not coming to charade okay, night because right. i can't process that quickly and that embarrasses me right you know and it shouldn't because right. I do all sorts of weird. You should things. know that when you stay yeah. home from game night, we all make fun of you. Still. Well, that's okay. Because <laughs> I'm not in right. there. <laughs> but Stephen Root's not smart enough to be here. You no, know that, right? I, I think it's really interesting that that's the one thing that really bugs me is that I can't, I can't operate really quickly mentally. Well, don't worry. As you get older, that'll change. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's slowing down. <laughs> It'll get much sharper. After sixty, it's like Bleh. yeah. Maybe it's not necessary. Maybe that particular skill is not necessary. Less and less. Well, it, it can't be because I don't have it. <laughs> right. well, can, and I'm still around. You can remember your lines. Most of the time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Certainly oh. gets harder as you get older. Does it? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I pretty much have to start very early uh, on if I have a boatload. And uh, I like, I've always liked to know them backwards just because then I can play within that structure. Right. Uh, if I know I'm backwards, then I know where we're going. So okay. then I can play within. Right. But that's harder to do as, I, as I've as i gotten older. Yeah. Well, I'm a terrible actor, so it's hard <laughs> no matter what I do. I could start a month before and still come out pretty wooden. You know, well, pretty pretty wooden. Yeah. And over wooden and overacting at the same time. I don't think that's true, but go ahead. No, you can. <laughs> if you can imagine somebody who is stiff as a board yet doing too much, that's me. Um, but that's all right. Now that's, that's Ed right. Sullivan. Yeah. <laughs> and now top as usual. Right. I, yeah. Ed Sullivan. I when I was a kid, I still remember how fantastic the Ed Sullivan show was. Oh, and the and, best. And, and and he was as stiff as a board. Yeah. And he'd been doing it since the twenties. Which so like you'd think. Yeah. Well, he was like loosen a up a little. PR guy or something. I think he was a yeah. PR guy, yeah. and then he somehow fell into radio a little bit. But mm -hmm. you know. 
pace for radio. But somehow Boy. it traveled to here. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's why I'm doing a podcast, cause, so nobody can see me. Yeah, I, uh, I, I wish there was Carol Burnett shows. I mean, I enjoyed those uh, so much. The Carol Burnett show, I grew up, you probably don't know this, but my dad wrote for the Carol Burnett show. Oh, it's and amazing. so I would go to the Carol Burnett, actually go to the Carol Burnett show and watch it being Romy filmed. Romy would go as well. She and, was friends with uh, Carol's kids. Yeah. Yeah. Such a fun night. I always... the. Television tapings are, you know, traditionally nightmare, mm -hmm. boring. Oh, my God. These were fantastic. Mm -hmm. And they were shot, an hour show was shot in like an hour 20. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's mm -hmm. band music playing in between. Live all. Live audience, yeah. live live audience asking questions, Carol being great, everybody. That was magic. Sure. Yeah, there's nothing like that anymore. Because it's live. Yeah, uh, maybe sound alive a little bit. A li uh, but, but they're freaking reading off cards now it's like give me something that's really live that you've studied and go right yeah so so you uh in your process of when you get when you get a part how do you decide where the character is i'm obviously it's written in the script the kind of person that person is but how yeah. do you decide like okay here are the human edge i as a writer know i'm not writing the human edges a lot of the time in the comedy like the comedy script i'm not saying mm -hmm. all the things that this character is i'm gonna yeah. get somebody great like you and you're gonna find more to it than i'm gonna bring i think to i've it. always got a gut when i read uh, first of all uh, these days i, I don't want to work for work i want to work on on really good stuff so right. so the script is paramount to me so he, you just told us you're insanely wealthy <laughs> no no no, no, no. I you didn't. Didn't just said that that's what i, I heard i did that's what i heard nope okay what what you heard is wrong right. i have enough money to pay uh my mortgage and, right. and live okay. very comfortably right. but it's it's making money is not the goal okay um the goal is making something of quality mm -hmm. for me right. at, at this point in my career. Okay. Like everybody else, you have to make a living in the right. first part of your career and you do whatever you can do. Mm -hmm. But at this part, I get to be a little pickier. So it's all about the script right. for me. According and to your definition, I'm still in the first part of my career. That's your problem. Still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So that's, that's paramount for me. And I always seem to have a gut when I read a good script, mm -hmm. a gut, a gut of, I would do this with it, and 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 it's almost immediate that I could figure out a character, and then I, and then I razor it down from there. But I almost have always have a gut mm -hmm. when I read, oh, that's that guy, and 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 go from there. And do you feel like you can get to any character? In other words, not necessarily. Yeah. There's some that that I I've gotten. You put on the clothes and you feel more like it, right? Uh, but you have you have to have some sort of uh, gut feeling for it first. But to complete it, sometimes it's outside in and not inside out. So, do you go shopping for the clothes, or do you work with the customer? No, or you, no, you, no. You work with the customer and all that stuff, right? But, but, I mean, but so it's but how do you, how Milton, do you find Mil that outside Milton thing? from office space is not Milton without the glasses, right? Right and a stain, mm -hmm. you know. Right, that's that's that character, and that's that's outside in. Right, but the inside out was was what I wanted to do with it, which was a slight lisp, and very quiet, and you know whatever. A movie that I watch, Office Space is one of them. Dodgeball is another movie I constantly watch, constantly. Dodgeball was my homage to Rick Moranis. Wow. Okay. My homage to Rick Moranis. Right. And I told Ben that when I said, I right. want to do Rick Moranis. Right. Uh, and he said, okay. It's great. It's great. It's such a great movie. And it's packed. It's packed with funny. Funny. But also a story and also emotion. And also yeah. it's like everything that you want is right there. <laughs> they fought so hard to end that movie with, with um, Vince stepping over the line and just losing. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who fought? Uh, for, um, uh, the director. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, he's he's uh, wrong. Rawson. Rawson said, he, no, no, let's just, let's do the opposite of what everybody thinks. Let's have them lose. And then credits. Terrible. What a bad Fant idea. Oh, awful idea. Yeah. And they shot it. Yeah. They shot it that yeah. way. Um, and, and showed it to him. And they went, no, that's not happening. Yeah. No, it's, it's. But I love the idea. Yeah. That it's like, nobody does this. <laughs> nobody right, just that, has them lose. That's, a, that's not a bad ethos to go through a script with and make sure, sure that it's, everything's new. Yeah. But 
we we want a catharsis. We want a moment oh, at the end. We, as humans, we have to have yeah. that pretty much, so or else why are we watching? We're it? telling a story, yeah. and the story needs to end. Yeah. And if, but I love the idea. If it's a they, tragedy, they tried to do it. If it's a tragedy, <laughs> yeah, and we're supposed to leave feeling sad about life, then great. But if it's not a tragedy, yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. Um, I yeah. don't know. We, uh, Foley and I made a movie called The Wrong Guy a while back. Love that it's movie, good movie so much. Well done. And I always thought we didn't have enough humanity to it. Like mm. I always thought it was fat, packed with jokes, but we didn't have enough. A little underneath humanity. Yes, but, yeah. but then I watched it with an audience on the Dynasty typewriter not long ago. And, oh, really? And the people were involved in the story. And when, when Foley gets the girl and gets uh, Jennifer Tilly. Right. The audience applauds and it's like, okay. <laughs> maybe suckers, we, maybe we didn't. The, maybe. These suckers fell for it. They fell for it, even yeah. though I thought. I, I thought that was a great Yeah, movie. no, it's, uh, but it's it's surprising. We we made a nod to it, but I guess we actually maybe sort of did it. Well, not mm -hmm. did it, obviously didn't do it enough to actually make a movie that's successful. Yeah. So there's a there's a line. It's <laughs> it's pleasant movie, but it wasn't successful. It's successful if it if if it came out well it doesn't matter what the people see it really in the end because you're doing you're doing uh your craft let's dig down on that so okay. if you make something great uh-huh that nobody ever sees or mm -hmm. like 400 people see but it could uh -huh. have been seen by millions that's enough that's enough because you chose it in the first place because you thought it was good right and uh it if you think what you did it's something that nobody's ever seen was really well done then that's all you can do so you don't need the validation job. from audiences to say that i was don't great. need it but it would be nice but right. i i don't need it because i've chosen to do it right and i'm i you put 110 into whatever you choose to do right no i i, I agree that we do but not everything's a home run like every time right you but know, what are you gonna? If it's not, then it's not. I get it. So what? But and I'm, I'm not saying it, it's you should regret having done something. Okay, I'm just saying good. that there's a validation that comes from like doing it. You had it. You, sure. you saw something, it, and and that became what, something that other what people. What it does is gives you more confidence. If it is successful, it right. gives you more confidence in yourself. Right. If it's not, it's apophonous. You know, it doesn't matter. I guess there's a, to me there's a part of it that says that if other people are saying it's good, it makes it. Like, okay, it's part of the com the communication of art. I am saying something and people are receiving it mm -hmm. versus I am saying something and it's hitting a brick wall. Sure. And so the brick wall part is like, I said it and I think I said it in the best way possible, but. It's a wonderful life was a flop. Yeah. It's yeah. not a flop though. Yeah. Right. So. It found its audience in time. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I understand. But I, I do feel like the, uh, that there's something more than just affirming in audiences liking it. I really feel like okay. I can tell whether it's, whether I was a good writer, or whether I did it mm -hmm. the best way I could have. There's well, for as an actor, I feel like what I can do is is what all I can do. And right. what happens after that is, is right. what Well, happens. you're wrong. And I want you to feel bad about That's the stuff okay. you do. That's <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't mind. But in for me, it's affirming because every once in a while, somebody will go, I saw you do that right. thing. And it was, and that even sometimes is even better. Right. It's like, yeah, you and me saw it. And that's it. What's the best role you ever had that got the least reaction? Ooh, you didn't write that down in your notes. No. <laughs> it's a conversation, Steve. I am in conversation with you, and you say things, and I hear All them, and right. I ask other things. You don't have to have an answer. Uh, which, yeah, let me think about it as okay. we go on. I wrote a pilot called Monkey World. I, I was uh, in Monkey Shines. Yes, that's true. That's but true. it's a different show. Th this was about a billionaire who loses everything. And uh, Donald Trump style, horrible guy. He loses everything. And all he has left is a really cr crappy amusement park in Florida called Monkey World. Mm -hmm. And that's where he has to try and rebuild his, his life from and actually start spending time with his wife who he never saw and his kid who he never raised. And it's a really, I read it with my partner Wally Walidarski and it's one of my favorite things I ever wrote. And it was something that right. we never got made right. because it just never got made. And it almost got made and uh -huh. the, the Net Fox wanted it and then wanted to me to get Albert Brooks to be in it and he doesn't want to be in anything or it's like, well, I, I'm not going to be able to get Albert Brooks yeah. myself. Um, yeah. if, do you have a truckload of money? Like, what are you going to do to lure right. him? Right. Uh, anyway, it never got me. So I don't, even though I love it, I'm not sure that it's successful. Mm -hmm. I love it, but it's, 
it's a failure in that it never mm. got it never it never blossomed to fruition. I can understand your point. Yeah. I don't quite agree with it. Yeah, I think if uh, if you succeeded in finishing that script, it's a, it's successful. Right. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, we, let's agree to disagree. Okay. I am a failure, is what I'm telling All right. you. No, I've done a lot just of. Just say I'm a failure. Oh, no, no, you're just say, just say, uh, Jay, you're a failure. You are not a failure. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but you do wear baseball caps, and you're a writer. That's true. Okay, right. So, but there's a lot of people who <laughs> and who are actually failures. That may be the sig the signature. Well, there of are failure. lots of failures. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's 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 fine. Well, and fuck them. You yeah, know, absolutely. whatever. They're failures. Uh, let me ask you this question: As a guy who has done this for quite a few years. <laughs> What has become easier now than what you did, I don't know, 20 years ago? Mm. Is any part Ooh. of it easier? I, don't, I can't say that anything is easier. Everything is a little harder now. Um, here, here's what I miss about uh, being, being uh, a lesser known actor, is that you can come in, do a bang job, come in, hit the home run, mm -hmm. leave. Yeah. Now... As a, as a as an actor with with some sort of a reputation, you can't do that. You're 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 coming in with, oh, he's going to be great. Uh -huh. So you can't. So you can't, not, you can't you can't you can't come in and you're not going to surprise right, anybody. You're not going to surprise anybody that if you're not great, and it's like what happened to him? instead of <laughs> right. instead of just really enjoying the fact that you came out of nowhere, right? Did good, left. That's I do miss that. Yeah, but I mean, so much better to, for me on my end, so much better to have you do it and be great. <laughs> and it's like, I expect sure. great and you're great. And it's fantastic. Oh, exactly. Oh, this part of my life is so much better yeah. because Stephen so that was, was I'm saying yeah. that was easier. OK, that was easier well, to come in like more fun, uh, yeah. without without expectation to yeah. surprise people with greatness. Mm -hmm. okay. I, OK, but everything else is harder. Everything else is harder. Uh, it's Why harder. do you think? Mm. Just, I think just normal aging. Okay. Um, uh, what is good about it is that you you learn every time you step onto a set. You learn something else. Right. Uh, and that's the good part of of being an older actor. Um, is it necessarily easier? No, but you have more knowledge. So in that sense, it's easier. Right. You have more knowledge about what you're probably going to do quicker. You probably don't have to audition for things so much. Not as much. Uh, and so isn't that easier? To not have to audition for things? Yes. That's that, that's absolutely true. That was a horrible part of mm -hmm. me being an actor, mm -hmm. is auditioning for things. Uh, and, and auditioning is, has become uh, a nightmare now. Yeah, uh, self-tape. Because my, my wife still auditions, and it's you have to become a technician as well as an actor. And that's not necessary. I don't get that. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, if it doesn't look exactly right. Yeah, it should a, be okay. It's okay. But they get feedback from their their managers saying yeah you know the lighting's a little, screw that right. did you see me do it right. right that's what should be important in that and and the fact that uh, you know they'll look at 30 seconds of something that's 12 pages long and right make a decision yeah that's kind of sucks yeah the truth is though in those in person auditions a lot of those decisions were made in the first 30 seconds anyway that's true but here's the here's the thing that you're missing you can win a role in a room, yeah, and you don't have a room to win a role. One hundred percent. Yeah. The thing that I miss most, I think I've said it here in the podcast. I don't even know if uh, if it got into the last time I said it, but if somebody gives a great audition, mm -hmm. and then you love them, and you go like, "Okay, now do it this way," just to fuck around, uh huh, and they do it. It's like, oh, yes, that's you the difference. Don't get that on tape. I know, and that's the, and that's what I want. I want somebody who can. How, who can, how do we do that? How how do you get? both of those things without being in the room i don't know i don't think you can i, think I don't that's think the so thing. either i think that first step just it's just a delayed audition then because then you get back in the room and say okay do it again yeah just what you did before mm -hmm. okay now let's do this yeah and then we'll see if you can do it and that's you it's can, paramount you yeah. can't you can't hire somebody because they have a million likes they might right. not be able to act out of a paper bag but that's what they're doing now is yeah. hiring it's, people for that that's a terrible way to do things mm -hmm. uh, the, the likes translate to nothing Right. Nothing. And it's crazy. Correct the moon, though. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, uh, <laughs> I've been on shows where the executives have said, you know, we've got this influencer. He's got 80 million viewers. So? you got to put him on your show. It's like, did mm -hmm. it once. 
didn't translate to one one more actual viewer. Uh -huh. Nobody watched it more. And Can't now, act. And now I have it sing. less than great actor. Yeah. Not horrible, but less than great actor doing something that some other person right. could have done so much better. And it, it, it nullifies the um, best actor for the role thing. Right. So Also, just like I like to be able to have people who, I don't know, a version of playing. It feels like playing. Yeah. And so I want... To play, play a little bit. Absolutely. And I want to change things And you things want to up. see a fresh face. Yes. Otherwise, how are you going to get the stars of tomorrow? Unless you see them do something good in a, yeah. you know, a, a less minor I role, only, but good. <laughs> the budgets that I work on now are only the stars of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the stars of today. I'm working on the stars of tomorrow, maybe uh, the stars of yesterday, yeah. uh, but not the stars of today. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of problems with casting process now. Yeah, but I, it's, uh, it's hard. And there are no... There's a there's a problem with the the infrastructure, the ecosystem. Absolutely, because there are no stars of tomorrow. Like they're right, they, they they're they, not they, given the chance. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's, it's in the cool. '90s we were given a chance to do a knockout thing on a you know a, some some show, and then you knocked it out, and they went, oh, he could do that. Maybe he could do this, but right. people don't get a chance to do that anymore. I'm trying to think of the last breakout star. I guess. Margot Robbie or something? I'm trying to think of like who is yeah. like new and a bankable box office star kind of person. And they're viewing I mean, people who were doing soaps and working yeah. became stars because they worked. Yeah. They worked their ass off in yeah. soaps. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I watch a lot of soaps, so maybe I'm a better actor. I now. love that. <laughs> uh, but I, now I have to listen to podcasts. That's really my job is listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, okay. Self-help crystals, a lot uh -huh. of stuff I'm doing. Uh, I was going to ask producer Ryan about it. I haven't gotten paid for any of this, right? Uh, yeah, no. no. Okay. No. So I don't know. It may not be the best business decision I've ever made. <laughs> but you enjoy it. Oh, I love it. I actually do love it yeah. because um, I let, get to sit down with people well, like you for just a, a moment in time that fun. I would never have in my life. And I was just like, this is great. We, we have not. Because I would walk away from you at parties. Uh, for sure. No, you wouldn't walk away. But you've already <laughs> said you're a little insular. And, I am. Absolutely. And, and also. Like, and you're right. I wouldn't. Would, would it be easy to. It's actually easier on camera or on mic to answer these right. questions than, than standing in the back of a party probably right, but we hang like we, for me there was a coffee we had a coffee you me and foley had a coffee we were there for like three seconds uh -huh. and had to go uh -huh. it's like this is so much better than the three <laughs> seconds so yeah. this is good that's, yeah. that's that's fine um let me ask you this do you help romy you know with her stuff does she help I you do. with your stuff uh yeah she, okay she always having helps a two-actor family yeah i i i want the help less I don't I, I I don't know why uh, I really only want the help with with cues and stuff. Wait, by the way, just I feel, say out loud. Yes, your wife is the actress. My wife is Romy Rosemont. Romy Rosemont, you would know her as the mom in Ugly. Um, she's brilliant and and better better uh, uh, serious actor than I am. Um, but yes, I do help her with and, her. And a little smarter than you. Absolutely okay. smarter. So I mean, let's yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, I don't ask for her help as much as, as as I do because I'll do the I'll tape her do you know, do an audition right. and I usually do a horrible job <laughs> as a reader, but I've been getting better mm -hmm. a, a little better. I, I why do you think you're bad as a do I think you're a good actor but a bad reader? Why would that uh, be? Because I try to direct a little bit okay. and bad director. Right. Okay. Uh, and now I've stopped trying to direct and just say the words as quickly as possible. Okay. Which is what most directors want you to do now, anyway. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I so mean, the, the, I'm I'm a little better at it now. The lead, the worst of those things when you're in casting is the yeah. casting agent or whoever's reading with you trying to act it up a storm. Oh my God. <laughs> The casting assistant who's going, give, give, who's well, they, really trying to be an actor. They were there because they wanted to be an actor, I and now know. they have an opportunity. Yeah, and like, you know, and you, it's, and, it's hard sometimes. Yeah, to uh, to do that, but uh, yeah, I'm getting a little better uh, <laughs> as a reader. Right, but yeah, we we do help each other. Do you find it harder or easier to do voices for animation than it is? Uh, it's it's very freeing. You know, it's like doing theater, you yeah. know, because uh, animation has kind of replaced theater for me because then you can do all sorts of weird things that you would never do on camera, mm -hmm. probably. But I mean, you're not worried, obviously, when you 
when you say your lines, you use your physicality. Always. But I mean, my body is my voice, so I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't act it. from here. Yeah, up. yeah. But but it's uh, it's almost doesn't. It doesn't matter what's happening here. What yeah. matters is what's coming what's out there. Coming yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, and you're you're bodily using your your character stuff. Yeah, and they nowadays they shoot that as well and and use it. In the animation. Right. They, the animators look at it and yeah. animate you anyway. Yeah. Animation to me was is a very interesting thing, completely unlike live action in that what we want, how we want the actors to perform mm -hmm. and how fast you talk yeah. and how broad you can be. And yeah. all, the, all those rules go out the window with animation. You can be bigger. You can be mm -hmm. faster. You can be stranger. You can do right. a lot of things that you, you can't do. You can overact do. a little bit in animation, yeah. whereas you couldn't on screen. Yeah. Right. And, and, and also, you know, in animation, we sort of get it 50 different ways anyway. So, oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, and and we don't have time and when it's being filmed or, you know, don't have yeah, that kind of time. Yeah, you can't do 40 takes as a film. You could you could if you wanted to do. do you you say you, you're done with directing, but do you want to direct? <laughs> no, never did. That's pretty much an A-type personality, I think. And uh -huh. I don't have that. Um, I very much like being in an ensemble atmosphere, which is why... I love doing news radio or Barry or any of those things where you're not the lead, but you're, but you're all in the same boat. Oh, okay. Well, I like to direct. So tell yeah. me the hallmarks of the great directors. What are the hallmarks? Let you, let me give you your gut before you tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Let me just let me get you my gut, and right. then and then take that shave it one do it and go or completely different or mm -hmm. maybe right. a little bit the same. But let me give you my gut first. You know, and right. and don't tell me to stand there yet. Mm -hmm. Just let me come right. in and do give me give you what my job is, which right. is an interpretation mm -hmm. of the material. Okay, and how quickly after that can I come in and monkey immediately? With you? <laughs> but let me give you the gut first. Right. Then okay. you can do whatever you want. That's uh, your job. All right. How much does the script or the director consult with you before? I, I would hope. I would hope we we have a good discussion about it, uh -huh. but no directing. Right. Just, yeah. Just just discussion about the character, what what the director wants to see ultimately yeah. at the end of the performance. Not play that. But, right. But you know, go towards do you, that. Do you does he discuss or she discuss uh -huh. tone? Sure. Like this absolutely. is absolutely tone is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, I want you to play this like it's a yeah. courtroom drama, is even this, though it's is this a farce? Right. Is, is this real natural reality? Right. Is it uh, high? You know, because when you're doing sitcoms, you're doing both. You're doing you're doing a, a theater performance for two hundred people and a camera performance for right here. Right. So what is it? You know, what are you what are you looking for? Are you looking for a little more, a little less? Right. You know, and that and that to me is a great for actors who are professionals. Um, uh, a little more air, a little less this. So it's pretty much what you should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan, as I told you, not such a good actor. I'm a big fan of good actors. Mm -hmm. So it's when I watch people become a character and play a scene in the moment, it's like magic to me. So like it's magic trick. It's like, holy crap, yeah. they did this thing. They brought it to life. It's fantastic. The hardest part is directors who don't know basics about actors. I mean, I think every director should take an acting one course. For sure. To to just understand the process of what we're trying to do. Uh, writers too, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big problems of writing and being in a writer's room is the writers say, well, why, why didn't they yeah. say it the way we thought it in our heads? Right. I, I, <laughs> I hear it this way. Well, that's nice. That's, right. that's not what I do. Right. I interpret the words. Exactly. Yeah. Because they don't understand it's a process right. of, uh, of somebody right. else's you creativity. You might find that they are come up with something that you like. Right. It often, almost always actually is better. Like one of, some of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten were things I never wrote sure. that are just in the script. And it's a moment between an actor in a... That they saw in their head. Right. Oh, it's about that. It could be between two people. It could also just be an actor on the couch uh -huh. with a moment where they're uncomfortable on the couch. Anything that, that speaks to the moment mm -hmm. of the show and it's on story and it's great. But it's nothing that we could have written in the right. stage direction or right. could have written in a thing. That's that, those are amazing to me. Yeah, I I remember doing news radio and the first six shows were Jimmy Burroughs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and within a show, every because we were all pros, right. you know, we weren't 
we weren't stars, right. but we were pro actors at that point. All pros and Andy Dick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Uh huh. Brilliant physical comedian. <laughs> Andy was. Right. Um, uh, but but Jimmy would say, Stevie, do that thing that the, okay, and that's all you needed. Just do well. Mm -hmm. Do do that thing you did the thing. Right. Done. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's the kind of director I like. Yeah. I also one thing great about Jim is uh, is that he. He lets you block the scene kind of as you're yes, going. As you're and going. then if you want to say it as you're walking out the door, they'll figure a way to shoot it, uh -huh. you know, to right. let you do. Or if you can't possibly do it, right. then he'll say, you got to look. Right. You got to. Yeah. But I, 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 I watched him. Time. <laughs> I watched the cameras or the sound guys. Or something, yeah. like, I, we can't get the sound. Oh, the I saw Jimmy take uh, camera guys by, by yeah. the back of their shirt and just right. go. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. happens all the time. Uh -huh. He loves doing that. Yeah. Like chess pieces. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, as Hanks would say, bits and pieces, bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is another thing that maybe you you love or don't. The do you go to dailies? I uh, would try never to. Right, but I think it's really helpful for a lot of actors that do. Uh, it's not my jam, mm -hmm. but uh, I think you can learn a lot by going to dailies. But it also takes away a lot. So I've stayed away from dailies mostly. It's a funny thing in dailies when somebody is saying a speech or a line and we have got like five takes of their close up mm -hmm. and then, you know, we're just enamored with every moment of their close up. But then oh my God. that's not the movie. No. The movie is going to be them talking and then cutting away to something else and oh. then cutting back and cutting back and forth. And but it's you get fooled in the moment mm -hmm. that this is it. This is what we're watching. And it's and and it's hard not to be fooled yeah. in that moment. I, I thought one of the greatest things I ever saw was I was do I did one movie with Clint Eastwood as director, actually did the close ups first uh, for each actor because then they knew exactly where they were going to be, and then we did the wide, mm -hmm. and so everybody went exactly where they would be for the close up, and then you do the wide. Every there was you didn't even have to worry about the wide until right. the end. I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah. I'm told that he gives no direction at all. But he doesn't. Yeah. Well, he gave me one direction, and it was like, do more of that thing. <laughs> you know, like Jimmy right. would do, uh -huh. do more of that. Okay. Okay. The end. All yeah. right, I'll do. That's the last I heard about it's it. It's fascinating to me also that that's a lot of people, actors rave about, is directors who don't talk to Woody Allen. People don't, <laughs> don't talk to you at all and just, just say, I have nothing to say to you. Just do the, do the scene. Yeah. That, that, that. And that can be horrendous. Yeah, that sounds horrible uh, it's to like, me. It's like, uh, yeah, then I don't know what you want. You're not directing if you do that. Right. Clooney's a good director, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah he's an act, I, actors as directors are mostly fantastic. Yeah. Bill Hader is a great director, yeah. uh, an, an actor director, and, and can short, short speak you. If you're a fan of movies mm -hmm. or a fan of, of, of anything. As he is. Yes, he's a very big fan of movies. And not a bad actor yourself. And enjoying yourself as you're making this stuff that seems to be the, the perfect recipe it is i uh, just like I think so have a vision in your yeah. head you've cast yeah. it well you trust your people and you sort of go you just and yeah. go and and, and have right. some sense of what you the wanna... script better be good though the script better be in the shape that's the thing that's yeah. paramount for yeah. me now yeah do you get to throw away the script if you want to absolutely <laughs> and bill would do that often right but you have to know what you want going in and then go, no, that's not what I want. So I want this. Yeah. So when you say throw away the script, that means you're improvising and they're improvising? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's. I, that... I remember one scene we completely improvised that didn't work in a car. And he said, we're going to throw that out. We're going we're gonna to do it uh, outside a bathroom. Okay. <laughs> well, and what would you say when you come out? Because we're, and we're going to get to this part of the right. scene. Didn't happen often that we do did a whole scene of improv but we would do little bits yeah. that's great that everybody was comfortable enough to do it yeah and and that scared me because i didn't come up through improv right um uh so i got more comfortable with it as the seasons went on in barry because we did it yeah that ability is is, uh, is you got to think fast and that's not yeah. my uh, thing it's important to, in writing for sure yeah it's important for in writing i think it's great but in it, acting but it's 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 the basis of acting is reacting. And so yeah. that's what improv is. Yeah, the great people who, the people who do it great are reacting and listening and adding information and sort of like, you know, bringing right. more value to the scene yeah. and more life to the scene mm -hmm. as we go forward. Yeah. Um, all right, well, back to the last word about being an outsider. <laughs> this, this is, again, this is why you're here. Okay. And you've made 
me love all these characters that you played through your craft, through you, you're humanizing it. There's lots of actors who might have played some of the parts you played in No Brother, We're Out There or, mm -hmm. or Barry or, that I might have really disliked that character. Mm. And I think that's there's a real value you bring to that. So well, thanks. I think that's the humanity part of yeah. being a character actor. Yeah. So how can we, you say we're stuck being an outsider. So huh? for the rest of our lives, I have to be <laughs> on this side of the wall. How, how do I make that okay? How's it okay? I think there is not a solution to that because I think that's your basic DNA is you're an outsider. Mm -hmm. You're one of the outsiders. I'm one, you are one, right. and many people are one. And we have I don't a moment? Think, Do we have a moment? That's going to change in your DNA until uh, you're. When you're amongst your brother actors, do you feel bonded? Do you feel like, is there a group of people? For this much time. Yeah. Within, uh, you know, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, is that going to change in your DNA? Nope. Okay. I don't think so. Do you feel bonded with me after this phone call, oh, this conversation? Certainly. Yeah. So do you feel like we can wear each other's clothes? Okay. Now. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm not an outsider. At least I have All right. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's 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 lovely. <laughs> no, you know what I mean, though. I, just, I think we'll always kind of feel like that, but we've gotten much better at dealing with it. I hope that's true. I think I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I don't. I'm all right. I don't You're okay. sweat at night worrying about it. No, but I do wonder if there'll ever come a time when I just feel like completely relaxed. I'm waiting for that time, yeah. and I don't think it's going right. to happen. All right, I I buy that, but we'll, okay. we'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll. I hope I'm wrong. We'll surprise ourselves. Be great. When I'm drooling in my my little rascal. Right. Maybe then. Okay. Maybe. You know, you can afford a rascal right now. I can't afford a <laughs> you know, rascal could, right now. If you now. really wanted one, we could get you one. They're, they're, not, as, yeah. they're not as fun as you think. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're harder. They're I'm harder sorry. to get yeah. around, unload. Yeah, yeah. Like street street driving on the rascal is not so great either. <laughs> Romy's dad never got it, kind of. No. Never really. Really wanted to get it. Right. Didn't never get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's tough. It's tough getting old. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a section of our uh, show that we like to call Listener Mail. Now it's time for Listener Mail. The listeners of the podcast, ah. by the way, it's mostly listeners. I, I lost 60 pounds to do this podcast. I had no idea. People didn't see it. They just listen. <laughs> no, you're up here. Terrible. So. I know. That's what are you going to do? Uh, this is from Max Prost. You know Max Prost, the Simpsons writer? Yes. Okay, so Max Prost wrote in. Uh, he's a former Simpsons writer. Excuse right. me. Right. He says former. There's Simpsons. a lot of them. Yes, that's right. I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. Here's something I'd like to hear you ask a guest. How conflicted do you feel about having your work enjoyed by millions of people, knowing that it's helping make billions for some evil studio boss? <laughs> I know the Simpsons. At the Simpsons, we were wondering if our brilliant and enlightening comedy might counteract the Murdoch family's destruction of American democracy. Uh huh. Is there some cost-benefit analysis you do, or is it all just rationalizing? Uh, it's all just rationalizing because uh, even though they're evil empire, they've given you a job and you are sustaining your life because of that job. So it's all rationalizing. Right. But yet, would I not have I thought about not working for someone that I really, really disagree with? I've thought about it, but I don't, I don't know if I've actually, other than the drug companies, because right. I won't do a drug commercial, but... Other than that, I don't, yeah. right? Similar, I think we are when we do our work for big media companies and especially Rupert Murdoch, we are perpetrating evil. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Fox, Fox News is evil, right? And, and Fox has ruined the country. It's part of absolutely that 20th century Fox no longer. Uh, and it's not part of Disney. Simpsons is not part of Disney, mm -hmm. which was also a different kind of sure. empire. Uh, maybe even yeah. some bad stuff there. Mm -hmm. But what can you do? I mean, like we make things that cost millions upon millions of dollars to make. Yeah. It's not like a mom and pop operation. Yeah. Uh, so we're stuck with sort of this weird we are stuck. oligarchy. It's, it, it would be nice if all the, the major corporations had some sort of uh, head that 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 had an idea of what we do, but we seem to be just widgets. Yeah. Uh, and and that's the, the normal thing now. I mean, this is goes more towards just American business in general that there used to be, it seems like there was a, a time when 
companies cared about being good citizens and exactly. having some exactly. sort of say about making the world a better place, and making their workers That's at least happy. That's what America should be about. Right. And was. Right. Even though it did it imperfectly, right. it was still, you're trying to go right. on the upswing. Now it's really just quarter to quarter profits. It's just greed is good. And that's unsustainable. It's, that's I'm shocked unsustainable. that we're still in that 1980s yeah. mindset. Well, yeah. I blame it ago. all on Michael Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> but really, that was 40 years ago. The country should ebb and flow. Things should change. So uh -huh. maybe there's good citizenship coming. <sighs> Wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. I think. Yeah. Because I, I hope so. I hope. I hope common courtesy comes back. Hasn't. Right. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It, <laughs> it's uh, our the the moorings of our society that used to exist sort of fell apart. Yeah. And, was, and that's gotta, scary. That's yeah. really scary because that 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 leaves you on a ship that's going. Oh, right. oh. But I just want to say that even if um, the progressive liberal people who I have always associated with mm -hmm. get destroyed i'm down to go with the, the maga people i'm <laughs> i'm with you guys a hundred percent whatever you want i want just saying that just to you know ah, I just see. to make sure okay i can't i can't I, do that i got my my, my bases <laughs> i can't say it i gotta have my bases covered steve <laughs> i understand you know i got a kid yeah it's, it's a thing yeah. you know i mean fun. i'm gonna lose probably what a quarter of my viewers because i said fox news is the evil empire but it is uh not who not people who watch this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like they're not going to be turning on a liberal Jewish guy yeah, yeah. and think well, I want to see what he well, has to say. Uh, yeah, I think it's unfortunate that 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 we're labeled liberal. We're I I, I would rather be labeled as good for the country. Uh, well, what, but that's what, what I and see. Good for human beings, right? I see you know? liberalism as something about caring about general society. Exactly. So do I. And and and, and helping other people. It's and I not, think other people define it differently. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I would rather pay money to make sure there's not people starving on the street in front of me. Right. Than, than just say, well, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, young man, <laughs> and just going. step over the body. Go over to McDonald's and get right. a job. Uh, and I, I don't care if you don't have any place to live. Right. I, yeah. I understand people think that government's stupid and spends money poorly and there's corruption and waste and all I think that's true, true. <laughs> exactly but that's the bargain i'm making i'm saying okay yeah. well i'd rather have Living that here air on the side of all that all those problems but making sure people aren't really starving and without any medical care or any of that yeah, kind yeah. Of stuff so yeah. anyway that's that's what but I, you're not a canuck like dave Oh no! Okay, I was uh, born yeah. right here in good okay. old America. There you go. I'm in, uh, I was All born right. in uh, in New York, but I'm from California. Okay, basically. All right. Yeah, very cool. So it's all good. All right. Well, uh, now we have a moment of joy. A moment of joy. What's a something that just makes you happy? Not the one thing, right? But what's something that makes you happy? Um, Maybe playing golf with my son. Interesting. Makes me so happy because I'm a terrible golfer. Uh -huh. Always have been. Right. My dad was a great golfer, a club champion. Right. Uh, and then when I tried to play with him when in my twenties, he 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 destroyed it by you can't do this. You know, right. Blah, blah, blah. So I uh, started playing it in my late thirties, early forties, and and even though I was bad, I really enjoyed it. Right. And the fact that I didn't pound that into my kid. Right. Say, you know, I'm I'm going to go do this. And uh, at some point he said, I want to try that. <laughs> right. And let them make that decision. Right. And then have it come to fruition. And you're out at Witsit or a nine hole mm -hmm. course. And, and he hits a beautiful chip onto the green. And you go, and that makes me happy. Well, that's interesting. Because I know a lot of golfers who love to golf, but also it makes them miserable. Yes. Like, and I'm not one of those. Yeah. I'm out there for the walk, the camaraderie and uh the beautiful fresh air all right uh i i i've played golf twice in my life mm -hmm. uh, so i'm a terrible golfer mm -hmm. it seems fun <laughs> it seems fun but it also seems hard and it seems uh -huh. like something that you really have to work at a it lot is. to get good and at. i don't yeah i don't work at so, it if i'd worked at it a little bit i'd be so much better yeah I don't want to. I don't want to either. I mean, that's the thing. I would love to be asked to play, go play golf I'm from people. I'm tired. I'm very tired. I'm ha no, I would, I would I go. Know. I would go for the walk. I would go for the thing. But yeah. people are annoyed with me because if I'm going to hit a ball, I'm going to hit it eight times to get to the <laughs> hole. I'm not going to hit it the three, the I, four I, times I, that people do. I, and I it's understand. also going to go sideways and yeah, yeah. strange ways and it's like it's like yeah. playing with the with So someone. I I end up playing mostly with older character yeah. actors who don't care. 
But with with me, it would be like uh, some kind of make a wish thing. <laughs> where you're just like, we'll let him play. You just let him well, play. Well, you could see the joy in, in Tiger and his kid when he's playing in these, right. you know, pro-am things with him. It's just his face is, bah, for his I kid. I get that joy when I listen to my son play music. Yeah, or, or exactly. Listen. Oh, and my son plays right. music as yeah. well. He's a drummer. Mm -hmm. So I get great joy out of that, seeing him yeah. work in that. Son used to be a good golfer, too. He doesn't do much mm -hmm. anymore. But uh, So I, I, I understand the feeling. But yeah. having that activity you guys can do together is magic. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm trying to still trying to figure out what that is with my kid. I guess it's we listen to music together or watch movies You're going to have to learn to play an instrument. Yeah. Who are the character actors you golf with? <laughs> oh, uh, um, you know, Dur uh, I, we have kind of a a game, a uh, Thursday game at uh, that little nine hole under the observatory, Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dermot Mulroney. Right. Because we've known Dermot forever. Dermot, when he was married to Catherine. Right. Uh, Sam McMurray. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't think of anybody else mm -hmm. offhand, okay, but right. there's many. A Richard there's Kine many, play? Richard I Kine. I would right. love to play yeah. with Richard. Yes. Right, you know, he plays I, golf. I, just so that I can see him put his hand in his mouth every yes, once in a while. Yes, he does it. He, he's able to do it. He's able to do. It. He wouldn't do it on this podcast. I asked him to do it on this podcast. <laughs> he said he wouldn't do it on the podcast, uh -huh. but it, he's. he's I've Wayne seen him Knight do it. comes out with us. Yes, yeah. oh, very good. Plays, you know, yeah. various people. Sam McMurray. I uh, I love Sam McMurray. Yeah, I've uh, known him. He was that my very first show. Best storyteller ever. Yeah. Um, I wish he was here instead of you, honestly. He was uh, so, I do. His story, his storytelling, <laughs> so much, much better than yours. It is. I don't know. He, he remembers so many people. Yeah. You know. I don't have that ability. Do you remember people when you see them? Oh, my God. I'm so bad. Me too. Oh, my God. That's why we're outsiders. Oh, we can't, we can't we say hello can't, to someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plus, you go on a set, you know, there's 150 people who know your name. Right. And, and it's really difficult. Right. Well, you're not expected theirs. to know everybody's name. Well, kind of by the if if it's a long shoot, yeah, you are, and it's difficult for yeah. me. As as a producer or a director, I absolutely yeah. remember everybody. No, the camera crew at least. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember everybody's name because yeah. it's sort of like I want to be everybody on the team. Sure, so. it's a team, it's a village effort, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I I think now we've established why people <laughs> think we're outsiders. We're yeah, because we're we have outsiders. no memories. Yeah, exactly. Our brains aren't good. You're who? <laughs> we worked on what? Bad Brains. I didn't remember that movie. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Root, thank you for being here. <laughs> this is uh, a fabulous time. You have more than exceeded. Uh, you know, when you said you wanted to come in and surprise people at being great at something. Yeah. Well, here I am. Well, Color me you. surprised. Thank you, Jay. That you was great. very, very fun.